Good day fellow teachers. Today we are going to talk about word building time in P1 terms 2 and 3. In term 2, word building time replaces pre-reading and pre-writing time in the timetable. By the end of term 1, pupils should have the basic listening skills to identify sounds, the visual skills to identify different letter symbols, and the fine motor skills to form the letters with some degree of accuracy. Pupils should also understand what a letter is and be able to explain that a letter is a picture that represents a sound. Now it is time to start teaching pupils to link these letter symbols with the sounds that they make. In the five big ideas, this ability to link a letter symbol to a sound in order to read and spell words is called alphabetic principle. Remember this language ladder. In word building time, we will start at the bottom of the ladder with the letters and work our way to syllables and words. That means that word building time uses a bottom up approach to teaching reading. Each time we will introduce eight new letters so that by the end of P1, pupils will know 16 of the letters in the Leblanc alphabet. With these letters, you pupils will be able to read and write many words. They will learn the remaining letters in P2. The main learning objectives in world building time are to systematically introduce the letters of the Leblanc alphabet so that children know the name of the letter, the sound the letter makes, and how to write both the capital and small form of the letter correctly. To teach children to segment a word, in other words, to hear a word and then say the individual sounds in the word in order to spell it correctly. To teach children to blend a word, in other words, to see a word and then sound out the individual letters of the word, blending them together to read the word. To drill common syllables and words until they are instantly recognizable to the learners. If you look at the prima, you will see a gray line in the middle of the page. This line divides instruction into a teacher-directed portion of the lesson and a pupil-directed portion of the lesson. The prima page is also laid out so that you have a clear picture of the major steps in the word building time lessons. Step one, introduce the keyword for the week. And step two, break down and build up the keyword with this chart. Step three, introduce the key letter name, discuss the sound this letter makes, and teach the letter sign to help pupils link the keyword to the sound. Step four, practice forming the key letter. Step five, using the letter drill table to blend letter sounds to make words. And step six, using the syllable drill table to blend syllables to make words. There is one final step that you don't see in the prima. That is the step when pupils demonstrate their competence by doing spelling practice with their teacher. The word building time lesson templates are a good demonstration of our from simple to complex teaching strategy. There are four lesson templates for word building time. In Monday's template, the teacher is expected to cover steps one to four. On Tuesday, the teacher moves through steps one to four again, but with less time for each step, so that she can also add step five, the letter drill table, as well as a spelling practice. In the Wednesday to Thursday lesson template, the teacher moves through all the steps, but with most of the time spent on steps five to six, and spelling practice. The Friday template is a review day using the Prima and pupil-led games with the drill tables, concluding with a final spelling test. But even then, the teacher spends a few minutes reviewing the information above the line. 
The objective of this video is to show teachers how to do the teacher directed part of the lesson above the gray line. As I said above, this portion of the lesson has four steps. So, let's take a look at how Jimmy and Semi from Abey Primary School teach their pupils word building time above the line. The teacher begins the word building time lesson on Monday by reading the Prima story aloud with the class. Next, the teacher points to the keyword and everyone reads it aloud. After that, Jimmy demonstrates for pupils how to break down and build up the keyword using a table he has drawn on the chalkboard. Gara, gara, ga, 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 ga. Gara, gara. After he does it on his own, that's the I do part, he asks the pupils to join with him, that is, the we do part, until they can read the segments fluently on their own, and that is, you do part. Now let's look at how Jimmy introduces the key letter for the week to the pupils. Okay. And he begins with the name and the sound that it makes. Jimmy is sure to introduce the letters as capital and small, sometimes referring to them as the father and son pair to help learners so that the letters introduced are related. Jimmy asks learners to describe what their mouth, tongue, teeth, and lips are doing to form the sound correctly. This helps pupils understand that each letter sound is formed in a special way. ก็ก็มาจากกระจอวิ่งโดยนุติงานเนี่ยบ่โอ้โบลูกก็คนนึงอ่ะโดยนุติงานเนี่ยบ่ก็ดาวลงการเกลกันก็ก็ลงไม่
that is illustrated in the prima and described in more detail in the teacher's guide. Go, 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 we know that children learn with their own bodies, so linking the sound to the keyword and the keyword to a body sign that represents the keyword is a powerful way to help pupils develop a strong letter sound correspondence. Uh, I'm going <laughs> hey, uh. Be sure to link the action of the letter sign to the keyword when introducing the letter sound. Continue using the body movement until the learners demonstrate that they have mastered the letter sound correspondence. Now it's time for handwriting practice. At first, Jimmy introduces the capital letter. He air writes the correct formation and asks learners to copy him. Be sure that when air writing, you face the front of the classroom just like your pupils, so they can easily copy your movements. You will need to look over your shoulder to make sure learners are following you. <laughs> Go le ping dog malu do go tere ping da ri diere ari that uh, writing to me is a very important activity also to to be done during word building time because to me it helps the learners first of all to practice writing letters as they now go to the to the, their books they know where to start and where to end when writing a letter because when you don't when you don't give them that chance to practice in the hair. You never know. Others may begin writing from the bottom. Others may begin writing from wherever they feel. The next step is to write the key letter on the chalkboard. In term two, the teacher writes the letter without guidelines and pupils write on their slates. But starting in term three, the teacher should always use the four handwriting guidelines and pupils should use the lines in their exercise books to help them form the letters with more accuracy. Eh, wanna come in? Go le ping dog malu dogiyori ari. Nena mo? Go le dogiyori. After the pupils write both the big and small letters individually, Jimmy asked the learners write both the big and small forms of the letter next to each other. These pairs are done four to five times to help pupils understand the correct size and formation of each letter. Notice how Jimmy always moves around the room checking for accuracy. Any learners who are not forming the letters properly need to be corrected immediately. In term one and term two, our learners were just writing the way they, they could. But this time, we are trying now to we are trying now to show them how to write according to the rules of letter formation. And as such, we, are, we have introduced the use of four lines. But to me, the use of the four lines is still a problem to the learners. But slowly, slowly, we are showing them how to use the lines. What I'm doing these days, I, I always make sure that whatever I'm writing on the chalkboard, I need to write using the four lines, the four guidelines. Because if you just write, a, if you just write on the, on the chalkboard and rule, the learners will find it difficult to copy what you have written on the chalkboard. So the tip there is just to rule the chalkboard so that you, you as a teacher also write using the four guidelines. At the end of the lesson, Jimmy repeats breakdown and build up the keyword activity. On Tuesday, the teacher does not begin the lesson by reading the Prima story aloud. Instead, the lesson starts by reading the keyword and moving immediately to the breakdown and build up chart. The teacher quickly reviews the letter sound and asks the pupils to demonstrate the letter sign, again to reinforce the letter sound correspondence. Pupils practice and writing the key letter again today, but the teacher immediately asks pupils 
write both the big and small letters together. On Monday, the above the line activities took 30 minutes. On Tuesday, the teacher has to move through the above the line activities in 15 minutes so that there is time to introduce the letter drill table and do spelling practice. On Wednesday and Thursday, teacher focuses mainly on the below the line part of word building time. Nevertheless, it's still important that the teacher takes a few minutes to review above the line topics. On Wednesday and Thursday, the teacher has just two minutes to complete the above the line task before spending the rest of the lesson below the line. Let's see how Semi manages her time on these days. Hey. Okay, churning Jodushu? <laughs> どうね。ああ。どうしゅ。コポコ。ガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガガ